So we should not confuse little g with big G. G, as we said, G is simply this little g is g m one m. Sorry, it's g m earth over r earth squared. That's what little g is, okay? And g is our gravitational constant. So this gravitational constant is something that relates. It relates that quantity m one m two over r squared. It relates that quantity to the force. What is the force? It's equal to that, right? So where does this g come from? Or rather, um, how did they measure it, should I rather say? And of course, if you, if you go and do research on g, you'll see that they're getting more and more accurate almost every year with this value. But back in 1798, there was a guy called Henry Cavendish. And I encourage you, go and watch this on YouTube, the Cavendish Experiment, 60 Symbols. It doesn't really explain it maybe that well about how it's done, but it is at least an interesting discussion on this guy called Henry Cavendish. But the basic way is that they measured G, okay, is they took two very large lead spheres and they tied two small lead spheres to some kind of fiber, okay and then basically if we look at it from the top there are the two lead spheres and they're these tiny guys like that and sorry I still I can never draw a straight line going down because of this tablet okay and these guys would attract one another right they would attract one another right gravitational attraction and as this guy moved towards towards that guy and that guy moved towards that guy it would cause a torque and so it causes this torque right so a rotation and it causes this fiber to twist right so just imagine taking a, a rope or something and, and twisting it and this torque and that twist was due to the force the gravitational attraction <clears throat> between these sphere these lead spheres okay very good and then it kept twisting until it was in equilibrium meaning there was no more twist uh, it was in equilibrium okay so then what this Cavendish did was he measured the twist he measured that rotation okay so and then he took a note of that rotation and then in a separate experiment, he would apply a known force, a force that he knows, right? Over here, he didn't know what, the, what this force was, but he was able to measure the rotation, right? The torsion. He was able to measure that. Then in a separate experiment, he applied known forces, which gave known uh torsion so then he knew what the force was he found what is the force that gives that exact same rotation as in this experiment and when he found that same rotation he was able to say well the the force between these the gravitational force in this experiment was equal to this and so now he had a force, yes. He had um, the masses, right? <clears throat> mass of that. He had the mass of that, right? All of these. He had there the distance, the R between them. So he had the M1, the M2, and the R squared. So he had that, and he had this, and so now he was able to solve for G. G was then equal to F over that whole thing okay so he was able to solve for g and apparently he was able to get within one percent of what it is today with with his i mean this was this was over 200 years ago very impressive so he was able to get within one percent of the number that we have today so with this uh, constant we are now able to calculate 
what the force is between any two objects. Okay? Alright. Hope that helps.